Hello folks, uh, welcome to the first module of uh, the new course that is iDevOps, that's Intuitive DevOps for you. So before diving into our software process scenarios, let me introduce to our characters in our story. Meet Rahul the director of our Imlai company. He is the head of the company. Pawan is our development team manager. Nitin is our operations team manager. Charan is our business analyst. Surya is our DevOps expert. Jansi is the director of health issues who wants to hire Imlai for services uh, basically this is our she's our client hi i'm jansi i'm the, i'm the director of the company health issues which keeps the medicine away we produce ayurvedic juices which helps to improve our natural strength and immunity without the use of any artificial medicines. Now, the demand for our product is on peak. So, we are now expanding our stores across the India. Though we are doing good with our stores, I want more people to have the experience of these Ayurvedic products with no side effects. So to make our country healthy issues, that is the reason I want to launch our products in online platforms also. But I'm confused on whom to contact regarding this. Let me search in internet for web application development company. Oh! Imlai Tech Services Private Limited. This looks good. I will directly go to them and see whether they can help me. Hi, I'm Jansi from Healthacious Company. I'm excitingly looking for a company who develops dynamic web app. Excellent. I am Rahul, the director of Imlai company. Of course, you have come to the right place. We specialize in developing web applications. If I may know more about your requirements, I might help you. Yeah, actually it sounds good. We want to expand our operations through our product sales via online platform. So, can you give me more information regarding this? We will surely help you. Let me introduce you to our business analyst, Charan. He will take you through the process and will clarify all your doubts. Hey, so uh, in our company, we cater uh, services uh, for front end development, backend uh, development, uh, databases, cloud services, and uh, even DevOps tools, basically DevOps, uh, which all together uh, will uh, make your application. And in front-end uh, development, we create a user-friendly interface 
which gives a very good impression about the product uh, to the user. So we do this uh, using the following tools in uh, like JavaScript, CSS, HTML and get by React, Angular, all those uh, tools we use it uh, to make uh, your application uh, fantastic uh, and beautiful and high catchy and eye catchy. So, and uh, in addition to that, in back end uh, development, uh, we help you to navigate between the different features of the application effortlessly. We use uh, the following tools such as Golang, ROR, Solidity and the Python, Node.js, .NET. These are the famous ones. So most of the tools we use it. And we have a databases here. So we can easily, in databases, we can easily scale our applications in SQL and cloud databases using the following tools such as Redis, MariaDB, MySQL, Amazon, RDS, which is specific to Amazon, uh, AWS, Firebase, MongoDB is uh, very widely used uh, for NoSQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle. So these are uh, the two databases that we use uh, heavily. And uh, we also use uh, cloud services to make your application fast and uh, efficient uh, uh, so that uh, uh, you can be, uh, you can easily compete uh, with your uh, competitors and uh, you can be the first in the race. And Finally, last but not uh, least, we use DevOps tools uh, uh, to make uh, uh, the to make the process to make the process of uh, making your application or building your application or developing it or deploying it or delivering it of your application for your efficient and to make the whole process uh, efficient. Uh, we use DevOps, and it would also helpful for you to have the timely updates of application so that you can continuously uh, roll out uh, the new features to your application so that your customer can enjoy, users can enjoy the, all the features and benefits of your application in an updated manner. In this way, you can be ahead of the competition race. So basically, we use the following tools in DevOps. That's Negios, DigitalOcean, Terraform for the configuration, Kubernetes for orchestrating the whole cluster, and uh, uh, Prometheus for the monitoring tool, Ansible configuration tool, Chef uh, is also a similar one, Azure, that's a cloud, and then GCP cloud, AWS, again cloud, Kubernetes we have discussed, and then Jenkins is the one which makes everything possible. That's automation. It makes that CI, CD, the continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment possible. So this is an intermediate tool. And we have a Docker that's, that, that gives us containers and then a Git. So it makes a continuous integration possible. Uh, it's a SCM, source code management tool. Before uh, we before we we move on to another slide, uh, I would like to just summarize the roles and responsibility of an IT company. So it actually begins with an IT architect team and and a business analyst team. A business analyst is the one who gathers the requirements, who brings the new requirements, who brought the new application to the uh, company to our company from the client side. Then it will move on to the IT architect team. In When it moves to the IT architect team, he takes care of the overall infrastructure should be, uh, how it should be, uh, how can we build it uh, so that the whole, the next whoever is there from developers till uh, operations team and security team can actually work on. So they do all financial calculation and everything, whatever is required to, to build an application, they will take care of. After that, it goes on to the a new team called a development team. We just call it as a, a development team. In this uh, development team, as we have discussed before, we'll have UI, UX designer, user interface, user experience designer. They take care of uh, uh, 
appeal visual appeal of the application and experience user experience what kind of experience you feel when you work on that so these things will be taken care of by the ui ux designer then uh, it will move on to the front end uh, developers uh, whatever design that was made by the ui ux designer will be developed and developed by the front end developer using a uh, using a any programming language then it will move on to the back end uh, developers uh, who make sure uh, who make sure uh, it, it is it, it can be connected or communicated with the back end services like databases uh, through certain programming languages then uh, once it is done we'll have uh, uh, database admins uh, who basically work on the databases such as mysql mongodb uh, mariadb such uh, databases uh, this is called a development team. Then it will move on to the operations team. Next, the next team is the operations team. In operation team, we will have a system admins. That system admins uh, will provision and configure the infrastructure uh, that is needed for the deployment, staging, testing. And then we'll have testing and quality assurance team testing and quality assurance team they make sure of uh, uh, the expectations uh, uh, from the, the expectations that the customer has about the functionality and the features of the application is met efficiently that's what their work that testing and qa team then we have a deployment team that deploy the application so, so that uh, the users can use it and security team will take care of uh, the security so that uh, like uh, they take care of there are no vul vulnerabilities so that uh, uh, hackers can't hack it. Uh, they cannot uh, enter inside the, our systems uh, or our application. That's, the, that's our security team. And once the security team and we have a support team, support team basically supports for the, all the aspects uh, uh, for uh, they give support uh, for the uh, support to the client in all the aspects of uh, these roles that we have seen uh, till now so this these are the fundamental uh, roles that we find inside an IT company but it slightly varies based on which project management uh, principle or ideology or framework that they are following so based on that it varies but by and large these are the things you find inside an IT company yeah as we have uh, uh, looked into the various roles and uh, responsibilities uh, uh, that normally employees have in an IT company so uh, it would be great if you also know about uh, the software development life uh, cycle so fondly we call it as a S d l c so sdlc if you know about this you will have more clarity about what we are going to do with your project how we are going to work on your project and uh, the pros and cons and uh, which would work well so it's better you would uh, know this uh, so let's uh, jump into this uh, software development life cycle so sdlc covers the entire process of creating software or an application when it is used for the specific purpose from planning to manifestation the stages in the cycle include a lot of steps that focus on maintaining and preparing the source code these include conceiving designing specifying programming etc so basically the st sd lc helps programmers concentrate on maintaining frameworks applications and various software components unless one knows and understands the stages in detail 
the game is not easy to play so don't worry i'm here to make it simple and easy and and much easier easier and easier and easier <laughs> don't worry so now the question is what is the software development life cycle sdlc of course the picture is in front of you you could get it probably so um, to elaborate the software development life cycle or the sdlc is the procedure of producing software at a low cost less time and at of the highest quality the most important resources are the time and money and the output is our quality so that's where the sdlc helps us in bringing up all together and getting a better efficient and qualitative uh, product so under this under this well structured progress of phases is visible that each organization focuses on very seriously this allows them to create high quality software after testing the software rigorously and then making it ready for manufacturing so now there are essentially six phases uh, uh, to this methodology that you can clearly see on the screen and they are as follows the first one the most important one is requirement gathering here it is here it is requirement gathering then we will move on to the planning how to go with the requirements and how can we do that how can we proceed that's what the second stage and the third stage is the designing a uh, software here it is here it is uh, designing the software like architectural design and the fourth uh, phase is developing the software here it is and the fifth phase is conducting tests and make sure make sure about the quality that's testing and quality assurance and the final step is the final phase is deployment and deployment of the software and maintaining that software in in the life lifetime of the lifespan of the software so that's what so it's like asking customer what do you want asking the client what do you want and planning uh, planning planning that uh, planning to fulfill the requirements of the customer client and then uh, start executing the executing that plan from designing then going for the development then going for the testing and assurance and finally deploy and maintenance this is the overall software development life cycle so now we'll delve into it a little bit more the first phase uh, before the first phase that we uh, see is project initia initiation so let's understand the software development life cycle stages one by one let's delve into each stage so that we can get more clarity on it what it is there are some development life cycle stages uh, that dictate the entire process they are as follows in the concern of the software development life cycle template let's understand the main stages one by one in detail the first one you can clearly see on the screen that is our project initiation so what happens in project initiation let's discuss don't worry so after 
you have decided the, on which project to go forward with and signed the agreement that's the most important with uh, the signed agreement the next phase is initiating it this is when the entire software development life cycle starts and you have to figure out the project goal in this phase that's what we do thereafter the team has to state the success criteria associated with the project and its goals in case you are under a terms and condition uh, agreement the contract with the company this phase is still important to go through the next point of concern in this phase is uh, phase of an SDLC example is to make a project charter. That's that's the very important. That's an artifact of this project initiation phase. Project charter. We make a documentation, proper documentation. So in that you have to prepare what what is the project charter. Project charter. Uh, in this you have to prepare and uh, define which factors would work with this project in question. After that you have to figure out who the key stakeholders are for this process so that's what uh, would be added in this so now in addition to that uh, uh, there are many things uh, there are many points of the process where you would see but overall the project uh, initiation works in this way you comes up with a you you comes up with a business case then uh, you do a detailed detailed feasibility study once it is done you will go for the project charter just now i have explained what is a project charter i will repeat it again the project charter here you will prepare and define which factors and what all factors would work in with the project uh, in question after that you have to figure out what who all uh, are the key stakeholders or uh, taking care of those processes or processes or process so once project charter is ready now it's time to review the whole business case till now then we will go for the project office and then finally we will uh, will form a team and we'll meet with that team so uh, there are many points of uh, uh, this process where they would give their inputs such as you have to get uh, the details about the user experience and a hardware specification what kind of hardware they require for that project and user interface these are the main uh, uh, points to be our requirements to be get it uh, from your client and user interface as I uh, as I told you then we have a technical limitations we will discuss about the technical limitations with that project of course we will consider the cost of the project also and software architecture what kind of software architecture we are going with that's what that's what decided but the IT architects that we have just discussed in our previous slides about uh, uh, IT architects what they do and uh, uh, the environment of the world development okay uh, at this uh, at this uh, state or phase uh, you can get feedback on such points from the customers and clients uh, if that's not enough if uh, that's not enough having expertise from within your team and outside would help you create and create the perfect software development project so after making out the project motto and aim so that's what the important thing here uh, from the project initiation what uh, we do is uh, we have to make out the project motto and aim so then we can jump uh, into the uh, developing the concept so let's go into the developing let's let's jump into the concept development uh, next okay so indeed developing software is not a one-way road it's not that simple there will be a lot of stumbling blocks around so there are different manners of uh, creating web applications so one of the most important and 
useful ones in this regard is to develop and design the concept first now for the application uh, that you wish to create uh, you have to make a conceptual wireframe and design wireframe is very important of course many of the people or many of the uh, guys who haven't worked in IT team also might have heard about uh, a word called wireframe that's very important uh, the wireframe design and then uh, UI design so if the detailing is not set that is still fine as long as you have a basic framework to refer to in later stages so before now before we discuss what all we do in this uh, concept development phase let's uh, look into how this phase works let's look into it let's delve into it little bit uh, uh, little bit more so so basically in concept development you just plan the effort what do you want to do you just plan it exactly then uh, we will move on to the next stage uh, that is our uh, scope of the project you just get the scope of the project means what how many amounts of features what all features you want what all functionality you are aiming for and uh, overall how much uh, uh, what's the how many uh, services are required how many front-end services, how many back-end services are required, database, what are required, and uh, what kind of uh, architectural configuration or is required for this. You get everything. You get everything. I'm basically talking about IT-related scope, whereas there are other scopes also. And then we have, you have to pick your resources based on the, uh, based on the, requirements that you have based on the scope so which can fulfill uh, completely based on that you have to pick your resources then once you pick your resources you have to select the right metrics right metrics uh, to uh, basically have a validation after that and then we will move on to the gathering the feedback that's what i told you you have to select the right metrics uh, so that uh, you can gather the feedback and then you can re-verify your concept. So then you get the feedback and finally you can do the course correction. This is how you develop a concept, an effective concept, an efficient concept that brings, uh, that makes, uh, that develops uh, quality and qualitative product or uh, output product that's what that's what so of course there is a great reason why you should focus on this stage more carefully especially regarding the stakeholders having a concept design ready would give them a more substantial project to focus on and uh, they would engage more not all stakeholders would understand the more complicated development language. Thus, such simplified imagery would help them realize the end product better. That's what is a concept development. This is a pivotal, uh, it plays a pivotal role. And aside from the design part of the concept development stage, the technicalities, that's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying that the technicalities are also important in an SDLC example. So this is because not all the projects can work with, all, with the already available solutions and needs more specific requirements. In such a situation, your team has to create a whole new concept that would bring the correct outcome you desire. So... And if you need more time and resources to work the solution better, your software development uh, projects, uh, you could take it. But this is a very vital uh, phase. So then once your concept is ready, your scope is ready, everything is validated, course correction is done. Now let's get into requirement phase. So here what we do is we gather the requirement so the next of the product development life cycle the most important one is uh, the stage is uh, to figure out 
to figure out what you would need to complete it. That's what the most important thing. Without knowing uh, what you have to do, if you start, you will be lost somewhere. So you can adopt the following methods. So here, uh, what we do again. Um, yeah, after planning, gathering and uh, designing the next step of the software uh, development uh, life cycle template is executing the uh, whatever design you have developed uh, uh, till now. Sorry, that's a uh, development. So that phase is development. Uh, so basically I haven't uh, added any slide for this. So I just want to give you what is development phase and what's going to happen. It's not uh, 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 that huge uh, to add a specific phases uh, to it. So the programmers would start with the coding uh, process on a day to day basis, selecting the framework of your choice. You have to continue with the development uh, procedure at this point. Now, Developing effective uh, software solutions is crucial for enterprise use and here a dedicated uh, a development team plays a vital uh, role in bringing ease and pace, ease and uh, pace to the uh, software development process. Just now in our previous slides we have discussed uh, regarding the development team who all will be present in a development team, front end developers, back end developers, database admins and then uh, uh, we will have a complete uh, set of uh, uh, people uh, there to work on. So that's how a development team works and then uh, they, they bring up uh, uh, new inventions uh, to the world uh, so that uh, uh, we can work uh, with a, a new software. And uh, after this, uh, uh, this phase will go on to the integration. All the applications uh, nowadays integrate completely with other services and you have to focus on giving your application the same functionality. This is especially important in companies as their employee information is uh, generally synced to another database. Thus, you need to focus on integrating your software with these databases so that you can access their storage space. So, after looking into all the phases so after uh, designing requirement gathering designing developing your code then integrating with the existing services of the same company so now all set it is uh, time to test the effectiveness of uh, uh, the development process or the steps that we have done till now so it's important uh, to handle the final uh, testing not only not only is testing important as a separate stage uh, but also it's necessary at the uh, other stages if you handle this uh, throughout the beginning stages that would help you detect and correct any issues beforehand if you test it well and find no defects in the program that ensures quality assurance. Even if there are some minor defects in the program, people can still use it. So now, in the testing phase of uh, SDLC, the complete application goes to different phases of the software testing life cycle. From the understanding of the requirements by the testing team, Till the test reporting phase, there are actually different phases of uh, software testing life cycle. So we will begin with the requirement analysis. Once the requirement analysis is done, then we will do a proper test planning. Uh, we'll, we have to plan according to the time that we have. We have to set up the timeline. We have to set up the milestones milestones and once that is done then we will develop a test cases based on the functionality and the features of our application once test case is developed test cases are developed uh, then we will set up an environment environment setup is nothing but uh, you have to uh, you have to provision uh, staging server or testing servers 
to run these test cases using various tools it could be a uh, sonar cube uh, for normal testing if if it is api testing you can use uh, api postman so it could be any tool but uh, you it, you should uh, ready for the test environment setup after the test case development once test environment setup is done then we will move on to the uh, executing these uh, test cases that we have written on phase 3 of this uh, software testing life cycle so because we have test cases already we have environment set up then what we have to do is we have to execute the those test cases once execution of test cases is done and uh, uh, and gate quality gates are also passed you will set up the quality gates and quality gates were also passed that means it's time to create a complete test report you have to manually uh, create a test report in addition to that uh, the software the tool that we use will also give a complete uh, set of uh, tests you have done and their results the test report and finally will close it this is how your software testing life cycle works now uh, test reporting is the last phase of software testing life cycle that you could see uh, exactly it is there in front of your eyes on the screen so after this phase all the bug fixes and the bug reports delivered to the client if it exists the types of testing that may be relevant depending on the type of system under development which is given below so there are plenty of uh, testings however this example let's look into those testers for test first what are these what are there and then we will the first one is testing of defect then path testing data set testing unit testing uh, system set testing integration testing black box box testing white box testing these are widely used widely used unit testing is widely used system testing is widely used anyway unit testing system testing and then black box testing we are going to do uh, in following modules using sonar cube uh, even uh, other uh, checking lot of uh, bug tests and quality setting up the quality gates everything we are going to do in uh, previous uh, 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 sorry no sorry not in previous uh, in uh, forward uh, or the coming forth uh, uh, coming forth modules and white box testing regression testing automation testing and user acceptance testing software performance testing and most importantly uh, at at our company at this moment we are uh, basically doing user acceptance testing for one application that we have recently uh, built that's actually fun task fun time <laughs> so i am talking about the testing and we are doing testing that's nice so the final one is uh, even software uh, performance testing also it's there and then what else that's it these are the tests that we do these are more than enough but these are specific as per requirement we do it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that you you do uh, all the tests for every application no not at all it depends upon the requirement and necessity and all set all done it's time to expose our application to the external world that's what left after successful testing the developed product delivers or deploy the deploy at the customers and for their use once the software has been completely transforming into a bug free product or application and no high priority bugs persist in the software now it's time to deploy to production where customers or end users end users will use the product so when the deployment phase is running then all the bugs present in the above phase that's the testing phases are fixed so now here what what left is we'll have a key inputs basically we'll take key inputs inputs from previous phases finalized application if all set 
no issues then you have a finalized artifact with you so that artifact or archive tarball dot or dot war whatever it may be there are different versions the artifact would be ready now it is time to put it into the production server so that end users or customers can exp explore that or can access it so for that there are a few more steps in between that you have to do final security review that will be done by the security team then application security monitoring and response plan these are the two steps you are going to these are the two more stages that you are going to follow before you deliver the product or the application to the end user use or customer use so once uh, final security review and application security monitoring and response plan is done now it's time to deliver it's time to deliver so at the end before delivering two more steps that takes place the first one is security review sign off that means everything is done we have done a security review no malicious uh, uh, a malicious uh, attacks uh, can be taken and that can be happen and then uh, no uh, vulnerabilities are left with our, our product these are the two things we'll uh, uh, we'll say that and then if all set uh, we will we'll sign off we'll do the security review sign off and then security monitoring and a response plan once it all set then we'll go for the uh, deployment that's it your deployment is done and dusted so once deployment is done the next what is next as soon as the developed product delivers to the customers or end users they will first do the beta testing that's called beta testing once it goes to the customer this is called beta testing if any changes are required or if any bugs are present uh, during the beta testing then they will report it to the project team uh, basically you might have seen this in a lot of uh, applications that you are using uh, 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 through browser or maybe uh, i think most probably you'll find it uh, through browser some of the features or functionality uh, is in beta testing or not only that if you are a software developer or maybe data scientist or maybe business analyst when you go for downloading an application or .exe file or archive or .war file what you find there some are uh, basically long term support that's l ts and others are in beta testing that's what they're saying you can use it while you are using it if you find any bugs you have to report it to them then so that they can make uh, uh, they can correct those bugs and uh, they can come up with the proper uh, product and after a few years that uh, beta testing application will become the lts and then the previous one will be terminated that is the overall procedure that's how it works and now once these required changes are complete or the present bugs get their fixes then the final deployment will be complete soon after the deployment of the application to the production server the normal users or customers will start accessing the developed and deployed application then it's time to plan for maintenance that's what left some bugs will be found by the end users or customers or client side the, those bugs can be fixed in the next phase that's the maintenance phase so the maintenance of the application occurs through uh, through the development life cycle stages but sometimes you would notice a shorter uh, period of it this usually appears after uh, deployment uh, when some development uh, team members keep working on the application still uh, during this period they look uh, for any critical issues that previously left their notice and uh, they fix it later after some months of verification and user testing the support work is passed uh, to different support team so with this almost all is done so the only thing that's left is closure 
hand off and support that's what the final stage of your software development life cycle so in the last phase uh, normally what happens uh, uh, whatever you still need to put in more effort you have to gather everything about the application uh, you have to speak to the customer users client side the users everybody and gather the complete information what kind of info uh, any feedback from them take any feedback from them then and everything and its specification and just pass it uh, all these things uh, all this information uh, to support team so you need to identify many other requirements uh, though these uh, should be prepared beforehand so plus you have noticed all those things with this all done and dusted it's time to move on to the next phase and enjoy the application congratulations your application is in air your users can use it from uh, looking at uh, all the stages or phases of uh, the software uh, development uh, life cycle that is stlc now we moved on to, uh, to the understanding of uh, different models that are widely used in sdlc okay so we will look into that um, uh, there are different types of uh, SDLC models that are commonly uh, or widely used uh, in the industry. So, out of which uh, the most common one, the most famous one, is uh, our waterfalls, waterfall, waterfall method. So, this particular SDLC example is the most uh, most uh, straightforward type of model and it is essentially the oldest two the main characteristic of this methodology is that programmers focus on each step one after the other anyway we'll be looking into this uh, uh, method in detail in coming videos or coming slides but still i will i'm i'm, I'm uh, trying to give a brief about this so after uh, finishing the first from the beginning to the end they jump on to the next phase and this continues this is how this uh, waterfall method works uh, this is the reason for its name as there is a mini plan for each of the phases and they waterfall into their next after completion so there is of course a drawback uh, to this as well when one does not complete the smallest details that can stagnate the entire procedure and uh, the second one uh, that we have in our pipeline is agile model agile model agile sdlc model uh, here an agile as the name says it's the fastest it's the quickest it's the qualitative oh, okay enough for adjectives let's see what it is uh, a major characteristic of the agile model is that it demarcates the product into different cycles and produces a working product quickly therefore there is a succession of many religious that's a common point of this process after each of these religious is releases is tested that back information is used in the following version for more imp improvement however there is a drawback in this model and and uh, that uh, revolves around the dependency on uh, customer interaction indeed in some particular cases focusing more heavily on these interactions often turns the development in the wrong direction yeah it happened i have seen uh, these kind of examples in my seven years of longest career of course i think it's a longest career of software uh, software uh, life 
that's fine but i've seen these kind of examples even i'm looking at those examples even now though i'm in a product based company so then then uh, the third one that we are going to look uh, is our v shaped model the name is like it's good it's like v shape a six pack uh, body shape that's that's nice so here what happens uh, in this uh, model uh, is it's a continuation or a similar uh, to the waterfall method model in its essence like the previously mentioned model this to concentrate on the testing process in each level of the process and similar uh, to the waterfall model again it seems the same kind of problem so here what happens uh, when so basically uh, when this normally you v v model used so when you are dealing with a small or medium sized projects that time v model is very helpful and plenty of technical resources are available or requirements are clearly defined that means there won't be any requirement changes or no upgradation of requirements or you are not going to uh, come at, come up with uh, new requirements in these cases v shaped uh, uh, model model also works well and uh, the next one what we have is iterative model the name says it's iterative let's see what it is so here in iterative model the main point of concern is the iterative model is the is is the concentration on repetitiveness the main focus of iterative model is uh, that it concentrates mainly on repetitiveness in this the top software uh, developers who are using this particular version of the sdlc example makes it very quickly so after doing so the test the software over 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 and over and over and over again and keep on improving on the previous versions with uh, little cost that's the benefit of course uh, uh, this leads to the creation of more successful versions in the following line as for the drawback of this model that lies in the quantity of resources it takes up that's it of course it's a damn good that you are doing the doing it over and over and over so you will get a quality product but how much resources you are using either it may be an either it may be an infrastructure or it may be uh, time whatever it may be or man force or work force so it's huge so that's the biggest uh, flip side of uh, or biggest uh, uh, negative point uh, for this one uh, so that lies in the and if not checked in time this number increases highly uh, then so then when this uh, uh, model is apt for uh, which uh, condition is it is apt so when major requirements are defined developers are learning new technology during the project or there are chances of changes in near future if any of these scenarios are exist then you can go with the iterative model that would work well then the next thing that's left in our pipeline is a spiral model it's a spiral model in spiral model out of all the software development examples uh, the one that is the most flexible is the spiral as the name says it's a spiral <laughs> okay uh, it concentrates a lot on a repetition if you see iterative model or spiral model as the name says basically they concentrate a lot on a repetition when there is a repetition obviously the quality will be good but on flip side the the cost also would be too high because of using too much of resources okay that's fine uh, if it is fine then you can go with it in this in this the sdlc goes uh, through each of the stages vigorously uh, it checks the planning of the process what the design is like what the build is how the testing process is occurring etc if any discrepancy appears this methodology goes back to the first step and continue that's what that's why it's a spiral one this repetition occurs over and over and over through each phase and each time 
the stages uh, showcase uh, advancement until finally the software is ready for deployment so now the same question occurs or appears in our brain that when to use a spiral model uh, in certain scenarios when the project is for a long term when there are frequent uh, religious releases or the creation of a prototype is compulsory for medium to high risk pro project basically if the risk uh, uh, appetite is high uh, if the risk if you can take a high risk appetite uh, in these kind of projects uh, we can use spiral model so the next thing is uh, the one that that's coming up is a little weird one but it's a it's a nice one that's the big bang model that's a big bang model so in big bang model among all the models this is a very high risk model the maximum of the resources in the big bang model focuses on the development phases this is more suitable for smaller projects rather than the bigger and more complicated ones there is of course uh, a drawback in this model too and that's the lack of definition stage of each of the methods in fact not even the most important requirements of each each of the parts are mentioned is in this option so then the next question arrives again the same question that's when can we use this where this fits well when there is no pre-planning when there are a limited amount of resources and if it is it's suitable uh, it's a suitable for a short term project and good for study and learning purpose so now by and large most of the uh, widely used models that we have covered here then one question might pop up in your brain so we have uh, so many models then so when can we, when do we when can we use these models where we have to use it so there is no hard and fast rule that this model only fits for this like that so basically what happens here you have plenty of models that are available for you based on your project requirement based on your cost based on your risk appetite based on your uh, time there's a project timeline so keeping all these uh, factors into the mind you have to decide the project model that which fits well with your project so that's how you have to decide so here uh, we have a brief uh, uh, description about uh, uh, each of this model however uh, we are going to discuss uh, waterfall method and then agile model uh, in detail because uh, they're widely widely means widely they used uh heavily in uh, industry so the industry that is the reason i would like to uh, throw more light on uh, waterfall method and uh, agile method so let's uh, jump into the waterfall method right now so this is our waterfall method this is how it looks this is how it flows it flows like a water from one step to other step that's how your project uh, goes uh, and moves from one step to other step so this particular model or method is the most uh, straightforward type of uh, model and it's essentially the oldest too the main characteristics of this methodology is that programmers focus on each step one after other after finishing the requirement gathering we move on to the design after finishing design of the application then we will move on to the development that's where we put uh, uh, we put our uh, features and functions uh, functionalities and uh, uh, user interface everything into digital code that's zeros and ones that's where the system gets understand then we will 
move on to will will move on to the verification and testing or quality assurance and everything and final step that goes on to is deployment and maintenance that's the final step a step if it is done all set your application would be ready for the usage of user that's fantastic that's brilliant but you see the flow other than the steps how we are moving from one stage to other stage that's how uh, you finishing the first uh, step then from the beginning to the end then you jump on to the next phase and this continues goes on till you come to the deployment and maintenance and then support so this is the reason for its name as there is a mini plan for each of the phases and they waterfall into uh, their next after completion there is of course uh, uh, pitfalls uh, in this as well uh, when one does not complete the smallest details that can stagnate the entire project you can see that if you can't if there is an issue in a development phase then it's all done that's it you can move ahead you have to stop it there stagnate your project will be stagnated there so that's the reason it's there this is uh, the biggest pitfall of this uh, method so uh, if you see then uh, what all the advantages of this method uh, in this the developers can catch design errors during the analysis and design stages the total cost of the project can be accurately estimated as uh, can the timeline because it's a step by step it's a sequential way so it's pretty easy uh, to basically estimate the time that's a project completion date as well as uh, uh, as well as the cost total cost of the project and with the structured with the structured approach it is easier to measure progress according uh, uh, according uh, uh, to clearly defined milestones and developers who join the project in progress can easily get up to the speed it's it's uh, whatever is done uh, before were done so they have to just pick it up and then they can move on uh, to the next phase easily so customers aren't always uh, adding uh, new requirements to the project so delaying production so these are the positive sides of the waterfall method then what about disadvantages or or cons of the uh, waterfall method so the cons of the waterfall method or projects can take uh, longer to deliver with uh, this chronological approach than with an iterative one so such as agile methodology so clients often don't fully know what they want at the front end so opening the door to requests for changes uh, and new features uh, uh, later in the process when they're it would be very harder to accommodate that's the that's the main uh, pain point of uh, waterfall method waterfall method main pain point is this and clients are not involved in the design and implementation stages that's the one more negative point deadline creep when one phase is in the in the process is delayed when one one phase uh, in the process is delayed all other phases are de delayed obviously that's how uh, this system works that's how this process works so now the question arrives uh, uh, in which scenarios or in which cases or in which uh, project uh, uh, it would be a best fit so when requirements are clear from the beginning if this is the condition this fits very well it saves huge amount of time it saves a huge uh, uh, amount of resources no ambiguous requirements from the client that's nice and good understanding of technology and the short term project with low risk so this is where this waterfall method fits damn well so out of uh, different uh, types of uh, yes dlc 
so like waterfall method v-shaped model and uh, spiral model iterative and incremental model agile model so out of all this we have looked into uh, uh, all methods by and large uh, in uh, uh, brief and uh, waterfall method we have discussed in detail so now i'm going to talk about uh, the agile methodology or agile model in detail so this is uh, the one which is widely use, used because of their huge benefits and uh, the most of my software uh, career I have spent and I have worked with Agile. Out of my seven years, most of the time, uh, I have uh, used Agile methodology for all my projects. So, because everywhere they follow Agile methodology. So, so that's all. I like this uh, Agile methodology very much because of, uh, uh, because of the customer orientation because of the customer oriented methodology because of that i really like this method so let's look into this and jump into this and see what's what all are there in it okay so we'll begin with what is the agile model we'll begin with this question then we'll move on to the other uh, uh, things like such as principles and what are the benefits uh, and how this works and everything so most companies have adopted the agile method of software development it's a method wherein we use display boards like kanban and methods like scrum so this agile methodology is adopted because it improves the agility of software professionals teams and organizations in agile the solution for any work will be through collaboration between self-organizing and cross-functional teams so to put it simply to say in the other terms agile is a process that allows teams to focus on delivering the highest quality in the shortest term that's why i really like it it uses an iterative approach wherein each work will be reviewed again and again uh, until its goal has been met so so before understanding completely about agile so where this agile has come up from where this agile has come so agile fundamentally come from certain principles the whole agile methodology is based out of a few principles so those principles we are going to discuss those are 12 principles of agile those are famous and those are very important based on that our complete agile methodology agile frameworks everything are laid on okay the first one in out of uh, 12 agile principles is customer satisfaction by delivering the software early so in the agile method we give utmost importance to customer satisfaction here the aim is to give the customer an early and continuous delivery of valuable software there will be a periodical interaction with the client about the ongoing software development life cycle second one of uh, uh, the 12 agile principle is accept the change requirement even in the latter stage of development this is what makes the agile stand out of any other SDLC models so when the team is working on the deliverables and there is a new request or a change from the client regarding the ongoing development then agile helps us to harness that request and adopt the change requested by the client uh, or to ongoing ongoing development this helps the client uh, to reach the goal easier and the team to adapt 
to the change it's hard when we have to adapt uh, to the change when developing the software but change could be good if we can react it uh, uh, fast next uh, the third one is delivering the software frequently when we can deliver the product periodically it helps to identify the changes required and the miscommunication if any with the client rather than delivering after all the development in which developers cannot entertain any changes requested by the client in this method we can give incremental development and entertain any changes requested by the client let us move to the next agile principle which is very impressive that is the fourth one is daily cooperation between business people and developers so this is what is very important and when there is a daily interaction with the business people and developers it helps the developers to work in the right direction and adapt if any changes are requested by the customer and the client will be aware of the progress that's happening in the team this makes the work happen smoothly and transparently uh, and the fifth one is projects are built around motivated individuals who should be trusted when people who are motivated to work are given the environment and support they need to complete the task then it will be beneficial for the client as well as the developers to reach the desired task having trust in the developer and standing by their side will help them to work comfortably so there won't be uh, what is that uh, it's called a uh, necessity there won't be any necessity for the micro management of the individuals that's where even uh, many of the developers as a developer as a data scientist as a devops guy even i like the agile methodology agile principles because it it improves uh, it increases the uh, trust between uh, uh between uh, the the one the people who are working around uh, and uh, the sixth one what we have is a face to face conversation is the best form of communication when having a face to face conversation we can convey the information effectively that's that's a fact and in the most efficient efficient way though sometimes developers will be in different places and effort uh, should be made to have a communication if possible face to face and the seventh one that we have here is working on the project uh, rather than planning working on the software uh, should be the primary targeted when working on it the developers will have to concentrate concentrate only on the development but but if you concentrate on the following plan then the developers will be diverted uh, in activities like documentation and etc and the eighth principle of agile is sustainable development able to maintain a constant pace Agile helps uh, the developers to maintain a constant pace uh, throughout the development cycle. This is uh, termed as constant velocity, constant velocity, and we can have a measure of the team's potential so that going forward we can take up the work based on the team's velocity. So it makes us, uh, uh, it gives us the approximation of uh, an estimation of the project. Uh, schedule also so next we will move on to the next agile principle that is the ninth one uh, it's called it's uh, continuous attention excellence and better design 
the ability to give continuous attention to the development is a sign that the team is uh, the team is trying striving hard to satisfy the customers it's it's the ability to give the best to the owners and the tenth the maximizing the work efficiency agility is about cutting the cost that does not lend the value keeping the work simple rather than making it complicated with unnecessary things is a speciality of agile and eleventh its best design the best solution and architectural emerged from self organizing it's all about best 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 but let's see some of the worst of agile principles in coming fourth slides okay uh, here what happens is a team that is cross functional can be called a self organizing team these people are the best in the business uh, they will help the client to reach the goal with the best advice with the best work and with the best solution best 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 <laughs> okay okay final one the most important one that's the 12th one uh, it is a regularly meeting uh to discuss uh, the team's improvement uh this is a major part of the agile practicing team once the project is completed a project review will happen happen this will help the next client to approach in a different way another aspect will be after each scrum ends an event called retrospective will be kept to know what needs to be improved and what the team has uh, learned about itself from this so with this uh, we will uh, wrap up the agile principles and we will move on to the uh, agile methodology and how it works exactly so we'll see the sub uh, stages or phases of uh, agile in yes d lc the software development field has tried several methodologies for delivering projects on time and took benefits out of it software engineering provides procedures and practices which must be followed uh, during software development and these are implemented in a variety of software and thus act as a pathway for computer techniques so now if you look into the agile methodology fundamentally aims to gain high productivity or heavy weight process it works on less planning and divides a task into small subtasks or small increments with the effort with the efforts of team work the team follows the software development life cycle phases that are it begins with a requirement collection as we knew uh, it's the first stage of a software development life cycle and then it will move on to analysis after analysis it will jump into designing that we have discussed all this uh, uh, um, all these phases in software development life cycle in our previous uh, sessions or previous video kindly go back to go back to that uh, videos and have a look and then come back here if you are not clear about what i am talking okay so then uh, from analysis it, it will move into designing phase and then from designing it will jump into the coding that's what the developing phase and then after code is done developed then we will move on to testing quality assurance staging all these things will happen once testing is done then the final step will go for the deployment and then maintenance and the cycle repeats again and again and again and again this is how your agile in sdlc okay the agile process is iterative in nature which means the changes can be made according to the customer customer's requirement until the customer is satisfied so that's the 
the greatest advantage of agile in sdlc so that's why we really like this uh, not only we the client uh, really likes this project because he can add many many requirements even after even while project is going on even while development is going on so that's 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 the biggest advantage of this uh, uh, this methodology or model so then uh, the agile methodology is in existence because it works on a, on a quick uh, delivery aim and open to acceptance requirements changes at even a late, late stage. It allows the user to interact face to face uh, during requirements and documentation. So basically the biggest advantage of this is the team makes sure to deliver working software frequently within weeks uh, rather than months so customer satisfaction is an important principle uh, by delivering a rapid and continuous delivery of small and useful software that's what we have discussed this is one of the principle of agile so so customer centric that's what the most important principle of uh, agile and agile put prime focus on product uh, delivery with a satisfied customer and on time so agile methodology welcomes changes in the project at any stage of development and the agile team responds well with it that's why we call it agile uh, to make this project agile the developers the whoever is working in this framework should be too agile <laughs> agility is matter like ms dhoni behind the keeping behind the wicket even i am the best wicket keeper that's what i thought i do not know how you feel that's fine let's move on to the uh, characteristics of uh, agile software development so the first characteristic, the most important uh, characteristics, of course, some other uh, models uh, uh, also has this character, uh, this characteristic. So that is iterative, iterative. The aim of the agile process in SDLC is to satisfy customer. So agile process put the focus on customer's requirement and allow multiple iterations which allow a customer make changes till he is satisfied and the second characteristic is module the software development system in agile divides the larger part this is very very important this is very very important it makes a huge difference in uh, development uh, it will be very helpful even uh, troubleshooting even during testing if any uh, if we face bugs uh, even that can be solved uh, uh, quite graciously because of this module concept so uh, what it does is it divides the larger part of the system into smaller parts or into manageable pieces called a module of course module in python means it it it, it gives a different meaning but here uh, it here it's uh, bisecting by dissecting the bigger part of application into smaller manageable pieces so it's called as a module here and this plays a very important uh, role in the software uh, development process and the third one is again time boxing this is widely helpful uh, during uh, uh, working on the project uh, here the iterative the iterative nature of the agile process requires the time limits in each module so each module is bounded or binded bounded with uh, uh, specific uh, time frame so each module uh, will have a respective cycle then we have parsimony parsimony oh, sorry sorry we should have parse okay that's fine uh, no yeah that's fine that's fine so we will uh, look into the incremental first and then we'll uh, move on to the parsimony so incremental here the agile process uh, develops the system in an incremental or increments because of uh, it's iterative uh, iterative nature and each increment is independent of the previous ones but at the finishing stage all the increments are integrated into complete uh, system and the fifth uh, characteristic of our agile software uh, development is adaptive nature 
adaptive nature in agile there are uh, change there are chances of new risks occur occurrence uh, because of uh, its iterative nature so its adaptive nature allows handling new risks and allows uh, the changes in the real time requirements and the sixth one is our parsimony here uh, the parsimony is needed uh, to mitigate the risks and achieve goals by minimal modules and we have uh, uh, risks uh, associated with the processes are convergent by using the iterative and incremental approach and ninth as the agile process is in collaborative in nature so it requires a good communication among software development teams that that's what happens and uh, the final one uh, uh, the agile processes are prioritizing customer satisfaction over the technology and process so the good development team increases the performance and productivity of the projects these are the characteristics of the agile software development uh, basically makes a huge difference when you compare uh, this model with any other existing model in market so next uh, we will look into the functionality of the agile uh, sdlc uh, before that uh, will the this methodology it's 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 a methodology uh, agile fundamentally puts a prime focus on product delivery with a satisfied customer and on time so this point should be remembered Agile methodology welcomes changes in the project at any stage of development and the, the Agile team responds well with it. So now if you see the functionality of uh, Agile SDLC, the most important one is it, is it uh, the working of Agile starts with uh, initial requirements and architecture, then it goes to the scope of the life cycle, then the most important aspect is iterations for pre-planning, project inspection and functioning. Then the release iteration and the final closure. This is how, uh, this is how your Agile SDLC func works. Fundamentally it works. These are the, uh, these are the steps it uh, go through. Then if you see those the scope of the life cycle can be varying uh, dramatically software development is not easy yet complicated but can be managed using the correct approach based on the requirements from the project the initial stage and the scope work almost the same for all models of the software development for agile for agile important work starts with pre planning phase then identifying the customer capability of the project and then accessing the feasibilities so these are the main things that anyway we put it in uh, the five uh, functionality that we have discussed uh, as uh, the functionality of agile as dlc so now we will look into the advantages the advantages of uh, uh, our agile so the most important advantage it ensure customer satisfaction customer satisfaction is key of the agile methodology no assumptions are made by the team or the customer the team and the customer will sit down and discuss requirements via face to face communication and the team will continue accepting the inputs from the clients and the second most thing least documentation agile methodology has less or minimal rules to follow during documentation or documentation can be easily employed so compared to the other models a reduced risk of development agile approach delivers a mini software to the customer after every short development every sprint every sprint or every short development cycle and includes the customer for the feedback gets the feedback after every short development and if 
there any changes to be made it also warns the developer about the upcoming issues during the later development stages it delivers the project within the planned context so very less planning is required and easy to manage the agile model provides a flexibility for developers and has a very realistic approach to software development life cycle